Hi, my name is Clayton Chow. I am a uh, psychiatrist and psychologist by training. I am uh, the executive medical director for the Institute of Mental Health and Wellness at St. Joseph Health System. I'm joined by Kat. So, Kat, do you introduce yourself? My name is Kat Zingano. I am a UFC bantamweight top contender. And um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here today. Thank you. So, tell us about what, what, uh, what made you interested in to, uh, speaking out on mental health. You know, I, the last few years, actually, this, uh, this month, three years ago, my husband completed suicide. You know, it came from a, uh, I don't know, really, a really crazy hard time in both of our lives. Um, I had an injury, um, he had, uh, some, some mental health things going on as well. Um, I had some mental health things going on as well. It was just a really hard time in our lives, and, um, when he completed suicide, it wasn't something that I was ever interested in talking about. Um, I didn't want to um, really just tell anybody my story. I, I felt like it was private and personal, and it was actually very hard that um, I actually didn't even get to tell people that he died. You know, being my position in the UFC and the fact that I'm under a microscope as a professional athlete, you know, the word spread before you know, noon the next day, and there was articles, and there was pop-ups, and there was everything, and me and my son really didn't even get to process what had happened in our lives before we were getting hounded by questions, and hounded by needing responses, and, and all of this stuff, while we're still very much not even sure what happened. That being said, a few years later, uh, and I've had a little bit more time to digest, it's very, very current still, you know, it's something that I struggle with every day, it's something that our family struggles with every day. Um, it's, you know, been, it's a, it's a very uncomfortable club to be in. Anyone that's been touched by suicide knows that it is, it's a, it's a different kind of death uh, experience and grief than, than normal, not to say anything holds more weight than the other, but it's, it's complicated and, you know, there's different waves of of you know anger and confusion and sadness and relief and weird things that just kind of come into it that um, are really hard to describe to people that haven't actually lived through it and explained ways of how they feel you know and so I really wanted to kind of explain some things and help some things and maybe even give a sense of normalcy to some of the people that are going through or have been through or or whatever to this certain dynamic because it is very hard and very complicated and I'd like to move through it myself, and if that means helping other people to help myself, then I, I appreciate the inspiration. And, and actually, it's more common than we think it is. I mean, every day in the United States, there's about 100, on the average, 121 suicide a day. That's like 12, every 12 minutes. So it's very common. And I think in 2014, it was over 40,000 people completed suicide. And, and for each suicide completion, there's about 25 attempts. So I think it's, it's much more common than people want to believe. And you're right, I mean, you, you and your husband were both in an arena where this kind of conversation <clears throat> is never outly spoken. Yeah. So tell us, how does it affect you since then? Um, it, it definitely affects me in ways that, that are almost unnameable. There's certain things about the situation that was very scary. You know, somebody as strong and as smart and as charismatic as my husband to do something like that, you know, definitely has an impact on me and my son and, and anyone that was close to him. And it really makes it um, a scary reality and the fact that there's not always the most signs. It's a hidden injury and a hidden ailment that um, a lot of times people don't recognize until it's too late and um, you know I, I'm constantly looking for why I'm trying to advocate what happened and um, some questions don't have answers coming to terms with that has been really hard you know um, trying to lead by example as far as my family now is uh, it's a constant struggle every day and some days I, I withdraw some days I'm very antisocial I use I don't know different things to avoid and distract myself from feeling the things I need to feel and some days I just need to completely unplug and feel everything and go through the emotions because it, you know it is the healthiest thing I can do to 
improve my situation when I myself have had struggles with depression. You know, so it's um, it's something that I'm sad is so taboo. You know, for for people to admit their mental health struggles and um, even the medication side of things like. There should be and is nothing wrong with people recognizing their chemical imbalances in our brains, especially with the evolution of food and problems and society issues and things like that. Like it, like pain is real in all different forms and facets. Something that may affect you really negatively may not affect me the same. Something that is crazy and unmanageable for me might be a joke for you to be upset about, you know, but respecting people's boundaries and the fact that everyone's in their own space and time and whatever I think is something that as a community we really need to address and be gentle with.